Now, clinical features of Kawasaki disease are very important and HSP, as we discussed, there were diagnostic criteria and investigation of choice. In Kawasaki disease, to make the diagnosis, there is no investigation of choice. All you need is the presence of six cardinal features. If you have seen, all of you are pediatricians, you have seen, you have dealt with patients of Kawasaki, you would know that these six cardinal features are very important and they need not be present simultaneously. But for entrance exam, you need to go slightly more into details focusing on key points that that is what I will be highlighting here. So to remember the cardinal features of Kawasaki disease, we use the mnemonic known as face cream, where F stands for fever and C R E A M stands for the other five manifestations. So these are the six cardinal features of Kawasaki. What is the first feature? F first F stands for fever. First F stands for fever. What are the characteristics of fever that you should remember? Fever in Kawasaki disease is high grade. It is a remittent fever, comes daily. It lasts for five days or longer. So in only one day fever, two day fever, you will not think of Kawasaki disease as the diagnosis and it is unresponsive to antibiotics. It is unresponsive to antibiotics. So first important thing is fever. Fever is considered to be the sine qua non. Sine qua non means not without this. There cannot be Kawasaki disease without fever being present. Second manifestation, second clinical feature of Kawasaki disease, C. C stands for conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis in Kawasaki disease is a bilateral non-purulent conjunctivitis. So there is no pus discharge, there is no sticky eyes seen in these children. So bilateral non-purulent conjunctivitis. Third we have R. R stands for rash. The rash in Kawasaki disease is defined as polymorphous. Polymorphous means multiple types of lesions are present in the same child. It can be papular, nodular, uh, macular, any kind of lesions can be seen, but does not involve bullae or erosions. So, and vesicles. So, does not have vesicles, bullae, and ulcerative lesions on the skin. Ulcers can occur in the oral mucosa, but they are not present on the skin. Particularly vesicles and bullae should never be present. In, it is mentioned in the standard books as well as in American Heart Association papers that presence of vesicles and bullae or presence of purulent conjunctivitis should make you consider alternative diagnosis rather than Kawasaki disease. And the rash can be present anywhere on the body, although the rash is commonly seen on the truncal region. So, trunk is commonly affected. Fourth, we have E. E stands for, E stands for extremities. That is the limbs. What happens in the limbs? In limbs, that is hands and feet, two types of changes are described, either acute or subacute. So, acute changes, acute changes will include occurrence of manifestations like edema and erythema of fingers and toes. Whereas the subacute manifestations, the subacute manifestations will usually occur beyond 10th day of illness. You will find occurrence of desquamation. Desquamation stands for peeling of skin. So, desquamation of tips of fingers and toes. Then you have A. A stands for adenopathy. This is nothing but cervical lymphadenopathy that is being talked about. So, Kawasaki disease children have cervical lymphadenopathy with size more than 1.5 centimeters and it is always unilateral. 
bilateral cervical lymphadenopathy is not a feature of Kawasaki disease. And finally, we have M. M stands for mucosal changes. Mucosal changes are mainly seen in the oral cavity and the tongue region. You may have features of oral mucosal lesions like edema, erythema, cracking of the lips, cracking and fissures in the buccal mucosa, bleeding from the buccal mucosa. But the classic feature which is described and a potential MCQ is strawberry tongue. The tongue is swollen, dark pink to red in color and hypertrophied papillae are present on the surface. It looks like a strawberry is kept in the mouth. So, strawberry tongue is a useful feature wherever you find this word. It is. It will always, one of the possibilities will always be Kawasaki disease in a young child. So, these are the six cardinal features of Kawasaki disease. Then, other than these cardinal features, there are other manifestations still frequently seen. What are the other manifestations? Other features, which are not the cardinal feature, but very frequently seen. They include features like gallbladder high drops, which may or may not be associated with any uh, biliary manifestations. Many children with Kawasaki disease, you may also find perianal desquamation. I still remember in my time, it was asked to me in Viva that um, if desquamation is not present in tips of fingers and toes, where other side you would commonly look for desquamation in Kawasaki disease, acute phase or subacute phase, you will think of perianal region. So, perianal desquamation is another common clinical feature. Third thing, for, for Kawasaki disease that you should know that these children have lines known as buse lines. Buse lines are present on the nails. Kawasaki disease children are irritable. So, irritability without any other manifestation may sometimes be seen in Kawasaki disease. The child is toxic. So, he or she is irritable. And lastly, joint pains which may be arthritis or self-limiting arthralgia are also frequently seen in children with Kawasaki disease. So, these are the other common clinical features that you should remember from entrance point of view. But remember, they are not the cardinal features of Kawasaki disease.